So each of the Wednesdays in Lent this year, we've uh, begun our service with a promise before we look at these uh, 10 words of instruction for our life and faith together. That promise is, I am the Lord your God. Now, knowing that, what do you say about number two? You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We are to respect and love God so that we do not curse, swear, tragic magic, lie, or deceive using God's name. But instead, use that very name in every time of need to call upon, pray to, praise, and give thanks to God. And what's the number one? You shall have no other gods. And what does this mean? We are to fear, love, and trust God above all things. Yeah. So, the last two life instructions for us this night, instructions, as they say, from God's own lips to Moses' two tablets. The two biggest, most important commandments and the two hardest ones to keep, right? So number two, this one about God's name. And then, number one, the right trust placed in God alone. So about God's name. You and I could stand here in church and use the A word, the B word, the C word, the D word, the F bomb, and a whole alphabet full of such words, and we would not break the second commandment. You'd break your mother's heart if she heard you. You'd break your English teacher's heart because you have such a potty mouth and your mouth is filled with such low, low class curse words, but you wouldn't break God's heart. God's concern runs far deeper than stupid vulgarities, right? The commandment says God's concern is with God's name, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Now, as an aside, isn't it, isn't it sort of funny odd when it comes to uh, the words on our lips where we never curse like, oh, big belly Buddha? We don't say that. <laughs> we don't say mucky muck Muhammad. But somehow, our brokenness seems to pull God's names right to our lips when we're angry or frustrated, right? But using God's name in anger, in hatred, in deceit, using those names to express our feelings or our frustrations, using those names to cover up our lies, now, that breaks God's heart to pieces. Luther, large catechism, 500 years ago, says, it is a misuse of God's name if we call upon the Lord God in any way whatsoever to support falsehood or wrong, wrongs of any kind. What this commandment forbids is appealing to God's name falsely or using God's name upon our lips when our heart knows or should know that the facts are otherwise. God's name cannot be more flagrantly abused than when it's used to lie and deceive, especially in business affairs and matters of money and property and reputation. So he says, let this be the simplest and clearest explanation of the second commandment. And then again, Luther, lying and deceiving are themselves great sins, but they become much more serious when we try to support and confirm them by invoking God's name, by making God's name a cloak in which we hide our shame. God will not permit God's name to be used to cloak our lie. And he says to our kids, above all else, our young people should be strictly required and trained to hold this and the other commandments in high regard. Just so that you understand, he says, to take God's name in vain 
is either to simply lie and assert under his name something that is not true, or, as we commonly do, use it to curse, swear, or I suppose even practice, practice magic, right? Luther says we are commanded to use God's name only in the service of truth and in the service of all that is good. We are to use it to call upon God in every time of need, to thank or praise God in times of plenty, and it is in this way that God's name is hallowed among us. And again, for the kids, we must encourage our children again and again to honor God's name by keeping it on their lips and to call upon God's name in every circumstance. You see, the heart honors God by faith. The lips honor God by such confession. The proper use of God's name is not only by how we speak, but also by the way we live and act. So, so let's swear. But let's swear that that's the gospel truth, the right way to use God's name in prayer and praise and thanksgiving. Now, about number one, God alone. God above and before everything else, right? We said every Wednesday, remember, these 10 words, one for each finger, start with a promise. And that promise is, I am the Lord your God. Now, because of that truth, that promise, God says to us, no one, nothing else can take my place. I alone am your God. Luther again telling us what a God is, right? A God is the term we use for that to which we are to look for everything good and to which we find refuge in every time of need. To have a God is nothing less than to trust and believe in that one with your whole heart. It is the trust and faith of the heart that alone makes either a God or an idol. If your faith and trust are right, then your God is the true one. Faith and God belong together. Then he says, anything, anything on which your heart relies and depends, well, I say, that really is your God. Now, sadly, uh, we know this. God seems to have such constant competition in our hearts. Luther again, pretty wise. Money and property are the most common idols on earth. The desire for wealth and the security that it brings clings and sticks to our nature all the way to the grave. But to cling to God with your heart is nothing less than to entrust yourself to God completely because this God is the one eternal good. So let this be enough for the first commandment and the most important commandment, that if the heart is right with God and we keep this commandment, all the rest will follow on their own. So tonight, a heartfelt trust in God alone for every good thing will keep us straight ahead in a straight ahead walk on the right path using all of God's many gifts rightly, but not allowing any of these things to become our idol. Luther says, it is this first command, this first promise-based guidance that instructs the heart and teaches us to have a trusting faith. I've said it before, it's no wonder that Psalm 119 takes 176 verses to praise God for giving us 10 simple words for life and faith. So, from Psalm 119, verses 9 to 11. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word, O Lord. With our whole heart we seek you, Lord. Do not let us stray from your commandments, for we treasure your word in our hearts. We do indeed. Amen. Amen.